Actually, my name is Austin Powers. It says here, name Danger Powers. No, 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 no. Danger's my middle name. This is Mike Myers in Austin Powers. And this is Mike Myers in Austin Powers. And this is Mike Myers in, well, you get the point. The actor is so intrinsically linked to the spy movie parody series that it's impossible to imagine anyone else in his place. Allow myself to introduce myself. While a lot of this comes from Meyer's talent as a character actor, the driving force behind this fabulously popular international man of mystery is actually Meyer's own pain, grief, and nostalgia. Coming off of Saturday Night Live and Wayne's World fame, a solo comedic venture seemed like an obvious next step for Mike Meyer's blossoming career, especially after the middling success of his underrated foray into rom-com territory with So I Married an Axe Murderer. He needed another hit, and just like with Wayne's World, he was going to write, produce, and star in it. Austin Powers' International Man of Mystery came out in 1997. Sadly, even though it performed just fine in domestic theaters, the first Austin Powers movie wasn't the breakout hit Wayne's World had been. Swing. It looked as though all hope was lost for Austin Powers. He had been thwarted by the evils of expectation and bad timing. Any potential for a possible sequel was being dipped unnecessarily slowly into a pool of sea bass with no escape. Thankfully, Austin Powers was eventually saved from this grim fate. But rather than convenient dental supplies, help would come in the form of the newly minted DVD format. Yes, Austin Powers' International Men of Mystery found major success in the popular home video market and built up a massive fan base from there. Very shagadelic. Audiences adored this oddly meta parody of 1960s spy films and their other early parodies. Though its main inspiration came from the likes of 007, Myers pulled out all sorts of references to other movies and 1960s culture. Between the laugh-a-minute script Myers wrote and his infectious on-screen energy, the entire movie felt, well, very shagadelic. Its quick-witted humor, bold stylization, and endlessly quotable dialogue were all part of the appeal. Throw me a frickin' bone here! But the centerpiece was Mike Myers, who played both the titular swinging spy and his cartoonish nemesis, Dr. Evil. I didn't spend six years in evil medical school to be called Mr. Thank You Very Much. Myers certainly wasn't the first actor to find success through his outlandish characters. Legends like Jim Carrey and Robin Williams were similarly launched into stardom with characters like Ace Ventura and Mrs. Doubtfire, respectively. But that doesn't lessen the effectiveness of Myers' characters in International Men of Mystery. Even after 24 years, they're just as compelling. While both Austin Powers and Dr. Evil can be distilled down to the characters and tropes they parody, the way Myers plays them is downright legendary. Oh, behave. Everything from the voices and mannerisms he chose to give them to the tongue-in-cheek costume design helped to sell the experience. When paired with that aforementioned quotable dialogue, it took practically no time for both Austin Powers and Dr. Evil to become monumental pillars of pop culture. You know, I have one simple request, and that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. The presence of these characters and the skill with which they were performed really elevated Austin Powers above traditional parody movie status. It became an icon on its own merit as a movie, divorced from its source material. Its influence was so complete that it effectively overtook the popularity of one of the actual characters it was parodying, which we talk about more in this video on our channel. The belated success of International Men of Mystery gave way to two sequels, 1999's the Spy Who Shagged Me, and 2002's Goldmember. Once again, audiences would get to see his uncanny character crafting abilities as he donned more elaborate costumes and added new and hilarious characters to the cast list. Get in my belly! Though the last movie of the trilogy is certainly looked back on with the least amount of fondness, it still managed to make nearly 100 billion dollars. So it's safe to say that by the time Goldmember was released, Austin Powers had been cemented as a spy series for the ages. I love gold! Thanks mostly to Mike Myers' unmatched comedic affectations, but much like the Man of Mystery himself, Myers was harboring some complicated feelings under his shagadelic surface, and they informed every decision he made on the road to creating Austin Powers. Well, that's just groovy, baby. In order to appreciate all the emotional and physical labor that went into Mike Myers' creative process, we'll have to hop in our time-traveling Volkswagen Beetle and head back to 1991, the year the actor's father, Eric Myers, passed away. 
While in their home in a suburb of Toronto, Canada, the British World War II veteran introduced his son to everything from Monty Python sketches to the Beatles to James Bond films. Mike Myers' comedic tastes and artistic passions were undoubtedly molded by this time spent bonding with his father. And while those formative experiences obviously had a huge impact on his later life, they weren't the only ways his father impacted him. In a 1999 interview with Times Leader, Myers would say that if his dad had to write a book about life, it would be called In Praise of Silly. That joyful attitude clearly rubbed off on Myers, and when his dad passed, Myers mourned in the silliest way he knew how, by creating the character of Austin Powers as a tribute to him. It certainly was a fitting tribute. Powers seems to be a culmination of every experience and life lesson shared between Myers and his dad. Their mutual love of James Bond, their exuberant approach to living life, and their wacky sense of humor are all proudly displayed in Austin Powers' personality. After creating the character, Myers needed to find something to do with him. With a little push from his wife and some workshopping as the frontman of 60s-style rock band called Ming T, he eventually sat down and wrote the script that would eventually become Austin Powers' International Man of Mystery. It took him all of three weeks. Very shagadelic. Now, knowing what we do about the role Myers' father played in the creation of Austin Powers, the movie makes a lot more sense. The unapologetically silly and fun parody of classic 1960s spy films has a genuine heart at its core. One where the character of Austin Powers feels alone in the world, wishing he could go back to a time where he feels safe and understood. A time that just so happens to be the period in which most of the media Mike Myers grew up on was created. On a more literal level, the father-son dynamic is everywhere in the Austin Powers series, be that the ever-conflicted relationship between Dr. Evil, Scott, and Mini-Me, who struggle to connect and find common ground, He'll kill me the first chance he gets. Probably or the later dynamic between Austin Powers and his father in Goldmember, which serves as the emotional throughline for the entire movie. These relationships end up being the catalyst for some of the best moments in all three of the movies, and they certainly wouldn't be there if not for Myers' own relationship with his father. The fingerprints of Mike Myers' script and mourning are all over the scripts he wrote and the characters he played in these movies, but because of that everything is going to be okay attitude his dad instilled in him, Myers turned that pain into joy, and he shared that joy with the world. Of course, Eric Myers wouldn't live to see the success his tribute character brought to his son, or how beloved and ubiquitous Mike Myers eventually became in pop culture. Still, given just how much influence Eric had on his son, it's not a stretch to say a part of him will live on as a part of Austin Powers' legacy, and that's Smashing Baby! Well, that's all we have for you today. Thank you so much for watching the video all the way through. If you liked what you saw, be sure to let us know by hitting that thumbs up button and subscribing to Nerdstalgic so you don't miss out on whatever comes next.